Welcome in to EP Wells Informed Investor Market Update. I'm Rob Black sitting in with Adam Phillips, CFA and CFP Director of Portfolio Strategy for EP Wealth. We're about 100 days out from Christmas. I know, I always count these things. The summer rally has fizzled oh so much and um, all eyeballs seem to be on do we test lows from June on the stock market. A lot has happened in the previous week. Let's hit some of it. Um, Adam, the markets pulled back in large part. There was a big number on CPI, the Consumer Price Index on Tuesday this week. What did you see? What do we need to know? Well, I saw what I think just about everyone else saw is that the markets didn't like it. Uh, we, we saw the S&P 500 fall over 4% on the day. So that was the worst, the biggest daily decline since June of 2020. And probably for good reason, you know, I think a lot of people looked at that and said, okay, is this an overreaction? But I, I think if you, we just back up a little bit to what we saw towards the end of last week, you know, I, maybe the market got a little bit ahead of itself in expecting this number to come out and, and be a really um, strong or, or favorable number. Uh, and they got a dose of reality uh, and then some. And so what this number actually showed is that yes, inflation did continue uh, its downward trend. It's uh down to 8.3% year over year, still well above that 2% target. But if you look underneath the hood, as, as we really like to do, and focus on the details, uh, it wasn't that pretty. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that I noticed, noticed was that, um, yes, gasoline prices fell 10%, or actually a little bit more than 10% on a month over month basis. That's great. But all the other data uh, really left a lot to be desired. So, um, what I noticed, noticed that was that uh, the core prices, so excluding food and energy, on a year-over-year -year basis, they're at about uh, up at about six point three percent, so pretty high. But what's notable is that just that the the rolling three-month average is up six point five percent on an annualized basis, which tells you that we're actually trending higher. The breadth of these gains, even though we're seeing some progress on gasoline and energy, the breadth of, of this, this price growth is really, I think, what's scary and tells us that this is going to linger along uh, a, a lot longer than, than most of us anticipated. And so what you saw was that reaction as people looked at this number and said, OK, the Fed really can't, um, that, that 50 basis point hike next week is out the window. There's no way they can get away with that. 75 basis points is all but guaranteed. And there were actually some who came out and said that the Fed can justify a 100 basis point move at their meeting next week. Uh, I, I think that that's probably a stretch, but we see the, the markets even this morning are pricing in about 25% odds of a 100 basis point or 1% uh, upward move in, in policy rates. So it tells you that this is really, it got the market's attention. I don't know if the Fed is really too disappointed at that because this this whole time there have been members of the Fed who have been saying, you know, the, the market doesn't quite get it. Uh, and, and it seems to that there's a little bit of a dis disconnect between the reality and what we're looking at on the policy front and what markets are expecting. And so I think some at the Fed, like Neil Kashkari, are probably looking at the sell off and saying, OK, good. Investors probably got the message now. Um, but uh, but I think that's really what we saw uh, on, on Tuesday and, and the market's response to it. Now you say, and I'm not putting words back in your mouth, but I'm going to paraphrase here. You say the Fed says the market doesn't get it. And yet the market has a history of saying the Fed goes too far and they don't give the, the markets time to digest those big 75 basis points, 75 basis points, 75 basis point hikes. It takes about nine months to bleed in. I think Wall Street's also saying because the Fed may not get it, the odds of a hard landing or a tougher recession are increasing as there's a disconnect between what the Fed wants us to believe and what we think the Fed is capable of. Is that fair to say? I think that is fair to say. And that's really one of the fears is, is that these the longer you have these aggressive uh, rate hikes, uh, and, and, and the, I think the higher uh, the, the odds of a policy mistake and maybe going a step too far. And it's really, we've been saying this whole time, the Fed is trying to thread this needle. They are trying to get job openings to fall from that 11 million uh, plus level uh, nationwide. But at the same time, they don't wanna necessarily see a huge uh, spike in the unemployment rate. So how do, you, how do you manage that? How do you thread that needle uh, without going a step too far and, and causing economic harm? And, and so I think, yeah, the, the, the response was also saying that, okay, with uh, 75 basis points likely 
uh, and uh, and additional um, aggressive rate hikes uh, after this uh, next next week's meeting, uh, that just increases the odds of, of a hard economic landing. And I think that's what uh, what we're starting to see uh, play out in in the risk markets here. Um, of note, you know, the other thing I noticed was the November second meeting, which is the next policy meeting after next week's. The market as of today is actually pricing in another seventy five basis point rate hike then. Uh, which is really interesting, and and you know what what I look at is not just what they are the Fed is expected to do in these upcoming meetings, but where they're actually going. What what is that destination look like? And obviously they're working towards a, a moving target. You you mentioned how there's this lag between when you see the rate hikes and when you see the the impact on the economy. But I think it is interesting to see that the, the expectations of this so-called terminal rate, meaning what is the policy rate when the Fed is ultimately done uh, with their heightening cycle or with their tightening cycle, um, we're seeing that most expect the Fed to finish up at about four and a half percent. And we're currently at two and a half percent. So that tells you there's about 200 basis points of additional tightening the market is expecting, which means that we're only about halfway through. Uh, and and uh, the market is you know expecting the Fed to uh, to get pretty aggressive here and trying to rein in inflation because it doesn't seem to be going down on its own just yet. Well said, and that gives me great perspective. Now I do a podcast and a radio show. I talk to more consumers. You're more of the professional portfolio manager. You're a CFP and a CFA. One of the things that I do on a daily basis, I scour news and I try to find optimistic nuggets here and there. Two that I've seen recently is that with mortgage prices higher, real estate seems to be cooling pretty aggressively. Um, people aren't bidding crazy amounts on top of crazy amounts, as well as you're seeing some markets like Idaho come down and in inventory build, but also even rents have started to cool off again on a one month basis. One month does not make a trend, but am I too soon to look for these green shoots and maybe think, you know, six to nine months from now, the water levels of inflation will have receded to more acceptable levels? Um, or is it month to month and I should just calm my jets? I don't think there's anything wrong with with looking for um, some some sources of optimism, right, and, and sources of hope here. Um, you know, I, I think as you noted, one month does not make a trend, and and so what I look at on on the, the rental side of things is that, yeah, we we know the 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 um, the residential side of things uh, is is struggling right now. We know home affordability is extremely challenged right now because not only are property prices still elevated, they grew about 40% over a two-year period. We know that now borrowing rates have spiked this morning. Uh, as of this morning, I saw the national average uh, on a 30-year mortgage uh, surpass 6% uh, for the first time, I think, since 2008. And so what this means is that it, it's going to be increasingly difficult for uh, potential home buyers. And so it means that many of them might delay their plans and actually go in and rent something out. And that additional demand on the rental market could actually support uh, growth in rental prices. And so I think that's one thing that we need to kind of keep an eye on. Um, but uh, you know, it's something to watch here in, in, in the months to come. I am hopeful that uh, inflation does make its way down towards more normal levels. But just to give you some some perspective here, if we saw uh, on a month over month basis CPI, so broad inflation, remain about flat, uh, so grow it's essentially zero percent over the next seven months, that would uh, mean that around April or so of next year, our year over year inflation rate would be down to about three percent or just below it. So that tells you what we're up against. We've seen so far two, uh, essentially two back-to-back -back months of flat month-over-month -month CPI growth uh, or inflation. Um, but is it too much to ask or hope for to, to see seven more in addition to that? And, and so I, I think uh, you know that's something for us to just kind of keep an eye on. But I think uh, overall, the trend will continue to move in the right direction. It just uh, might take some time. So what's next? Is it, we've gone through earnings season. Do we need more earnings adjustments to come down? Do we need people fired or do we need people hired? Um, what's the Fed looking for? What is Adam Phillips at EP Wealth looking for? Well, I'm looking, I'm looking at a lot. Um, but one of the things that I, I am, am really looking at is um, not just from the economic side and, and what's going on with the labor data and, you know, the, the weekly jobless claims, uh, I think, is a really good and timely indicator. It actually tells us that the jobs market is still really strong. I think the monthly and uh, the monthly data we get confirms that. But on the weekly data that we're getting, 
you know, 213 week uh, initial jobless claims were filed that was released this morning. Um, that's the lowest since May. So it tells you that people aren't running to, to claim their unemployment benefits. They're actually doing okay from, from the job standpoint. So we're not seeing layoffs just yet. Um, but, uh, but what I'm looking at uh, from the market standpoint are these earnings revisions. And I think they still need to come down a little bit. And we're starting to see a little bit of that where the S&P 500, we've seen downward earnings revisions actually outpace upward earnings revisions for about 13 consecutive weeks now. And so I think that trend is, is uh, it, it's underway, but I think we need to see a little bit more of it um, to get more comfortable with, with current equity valuations and, and before we start to see them as an attractive entry point. And I think the Fed is really looking at the labor market data. Obviously, they're looking at inflation as well, but um, they are, uh, as, as I said, hopeful um, that they will start to see financial conditions start to tighten. And, and some, some signs of that could be uh, shown in the, in the labor market where they're starting to see some loosening up um, and, and where the job market might be getting a, a little bit uh, tougher. And that might put a ceiling or a cap on wage inflation, which is really what they're worried about. Of note, I want to circle back to the mortgage rate and just remind people a 6% mortgage rate isn't ludicrous. My first mortgage that I got was about 10 and a half, 11%. 3% a year ago was ludicrously low. My father, long past, would be rolling in his grave like, get that 10 times over, you can get that. Um, so I, I think we're resetting where we need to reset. It just needs time to digest and feel comfortable with it. Wall Street will figure it out, I think, in the long run. Is there anything else that you want to tip in as we wrap up this segment, Adam? No, I, I think that's a great point, uh, Rob. So thanks for mentioning that. And no, I, you know, next week uh, will be a big week. I think that's what everyone's focused on. Um, you know, the, the FOMC, uh, so the Federal Open Market Committee, will meet on Tuesday, uh, and their meeting will uh, end oh, yeah. on Wednesday. And so on Wednesday, we'll we'll hear uh, whether it's a 25, 50, 75, 100 basis point rate hike. It's almost certain to be a 75 basis point. They've they've pretty much uh, tried to telegraph that um, through um, their their speeches over the last few days and and through sources that say the Wall Street Journal. So um, I, I think they've done a good job at setting expectations there. But I think beyond that, we're always looking at what Jay Powell uh, talks about in in his uh, press conference that follows the conclusion of that uh, policy meeting as well as we'll be getting some updated uh, economic projections from the Fed. So this comes out quarterly. And so I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, where their, um, what their outlook is and, and where they think inflation is heading over the next um, you know, several quarters and, and what that means for policy rates. So I think a lot of this really just uh, gives us a perspective about how the Fed itself is viewing it outside of their policy actions. What is their outlook? So um, I think it'll be really interesting. So plenty of, for us to talk about uh, next time around. Sounds good. As always, thank you. I want to remind people it's always a good time to reach out to your financial planning team at EP Wealth and get an update, share information, talk about what's working for you, what's not working for you. Information is the key to successful financial planning. I'm Rob Black for the Informed Investor Market Outlook with EP Wealth. He's Adam Phillips, CFA, CFP, Director of Portfolio Strategy. Um, great insights. Thanks for your information. Thank you. Thank you.